Mountain Lake is the only natural lake in the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. Although at one time Mountain Lake was ecologically healthy, it became very sick. Now we're putting energy into helping it heal. It isn't often that we have the opportunity to restore a natural lake in the middle of a dense urban city such as San Francisco. So this ambition for the Presidio is an important example of urban ecology that aims to create and protect healthy ecosystems right in the middle of our cities, which is where most people in the world live. The goal of restoring Mountain Lake is to reintroduce native species that have been lost and to restore a vibrant ecosystem. We know what it looked like because of surveys that we did of the lake sediment. The geologists actually came out and they took um, samples of the sediment and just punched these cores down in the lake. And by going through and tracking how that sediment accumulated and tying that to radiocarbon or charcoal that's in those sedimentary layers, we can tell that the lake is about 2,000 years old. Mountain Lake would have been very important to the Ohlone or the Native Americans who lived here. So they could have gathered fresh water and tule, the raw material for the round tule houses. The rafts or their canoes were also made out of tule. So tule was a very important resource and Mountain Lake would have been a very attractive place to collect and harvest and process tule. We can also tell from the cores what pollen was raining down around the lake for the last 2,000 years. The core samples showed us the vegetative history of Mountain Lake. We also did research to find out the historic animals that used to live here. Efforts to restore the lake began in the mid-1990s, when it became clear that the lake was getting sicker. The community began to grow increasingly concerned about what they were seeing going on out at the lake. There were a couple of swans that lived at the lake that the community was very fond of, and one of them had died of lead poisoning. And every year in August, the lake would be covered with a thick carpet of algae, and there'd be thousands of dead fish floating around in the top of the lake, and it was clear the lake was dying. And so we retained the services of Alex Horn, who has worked in lakes all over the world trying to address problems with their health. He quickly identified three problems. The first was the shallowness of the lake. The lake is approximately four acres in size. The west side is Highway 1, and the Pershing Tunnel was cut in the Presidio, and that soil was brought down, and it filled about 40% of the lake, and the road was built on that 40% of the lake. And over time, as all of the sediment had moved into the lake from the surrounding landscape, it had gotten very shallow to the point where it could no longer sustain healthy life. The second was the quality of the water that was flowing into the lake. All the storm water flowed off Highway 1. Tannins that were flowing out of the eucalyptus trees polluting the lake. The east side of the lake is the Presidio Golf Course. And for many, many years, all that grass fertilizer, all of those pesticides, all those herbicides, nutrients were flowing in the groundwater down into the lake and really messing with the ecology of the lake. Then thirdly, he identified the impacts of human use. Decades of use by the community ever since Mountain Lake Park was built in the 1930s in the Richmond District. Very popular site. Public use was limiting the amount of vegetation that could grow in the lake and increasing the amount of sediment that was going into the lake. Scads of people came each day to feed the ducks, but you know, bread and, and popcorn and things are not things that ducks and pigeons are really adapted to eat and that has an impact on their digestive system and all of that ends up in the lake. So the three constituencies framing the lake, we undertook a planning process. Essentially laid forth a vision, phased over a number of years, and just about that time, we decided to take core samples, trying to identify where the bottom of the lake was. We discovered something else very alarming. Extremely high levels of lead in the upper two to six feet of the sediment, but also other chemicals that you would normally not find in a natural lake. This stopped the restoration until the toxic sediment had been removed through a remediation process. Hundreds of core samples showed the level of contaminants and where they were distributed within the lake. As part of the stabilization of Highway 1, Caltrans installed devices to catch contaminated runoff so it could not flow into the lake. The phase two of the project um, was the beginning of the dredging component. 
The dredge itself sucks up the contaminated sediment from the lake. It is going through that pipeline and up to our material handling area. This is what the sediment looks like. It's really dark and murky and black. Um, it's essentially about 90% water or more and very little sediment. What we have to do is separate the water from the sediment. So the first step is to inject what we call polymers or flocculins. This is what happens instantaneously. These bags have little holes in them and so the sediment stays in the bag and the water flows out of the bag. This is the water that comes out of the geotubes. It's still a little murky and brown, and we want to make sure that the water that we're sending back to the lake is clean and has very little turbidity in it. So the last step is to go through a sand filter system, and then it goes into a bag filter and an organo clay and carbon filter, these large green tanks. This is how nice this water looks. It almost looks like drinking water. Now that the remediation is done, Experts have designed a systems approach for us to best recover the lake. The key to the restoration will be re-establishing the submerged aquatic plants. These are the key to getting the lake to look pretty and clear and also healthier and more like it was in the original state, but still with the city all around it. But these submerged aquatic vegetation, various kinds of pondweeds growing around the bottom, what they do is called biomanipulation which is a manipulation of the whole ecosystem. So the plants provide hiding places for small zooplankton. If they can't hide during the day, the fish eat them. So if we provide some underwater refuges, they can go hide there. They also take up nutrients so that there are less nutrients in the lake for algae to grow. The plant roots stabilize the edge of the lake so that the wind doesn't stir up the mud. The key to the dredging success will be that because the lake's deeper, the wind won't mix the bottom up. So the nutrients that are in the bottom won't get stirred up so much. So then we have lower nutrients. And we're going to restore the native mussels, which will help us clean out uh, not only the bacteria, actually, but also some of the algae. So it'll be another component of biomanipulation. The final thing we have to do, and it's being done right now, is the removal of almost all the non-native fish, like carp, that grub around at the bottom. They pull out our submerged plants looking for whatever they eat in that lake. So he's of great significance. All around the world, local plants and animals are being threatened by invasive species that come in from other habitats. Here at Mountain Lake, non-native turtles and fish drove out native fish and amphibians through predation. They also don't allow the lake's native aquatic vegetation, which is crucial to the lake's health, to establish itself. They so spent a lot of time out there in the water, really focused on fish removal, gill netting, electrofishing, fike nets, seam nets, all different types of humane ways to capture fish and to relocate them to Sonoma County. And that has proven to be quite a challenge. Considering one female carp can lay up to two million eggs in one spawning season, non-native invasive carp were introduced probably in the 1930s. People's pets were released over the years, red-eared sliders primarily. Those have been shown to outcompete the native turtles, to introduce disease into native turtle populations. And I've been building traps and going out pretty much every day and collecting these non-native turtles and relocating them. But yeah, all different kinds of things have ended up in that lake. Like there was an alligator in the 1990s that was there. I pulled out a, a five foot long sturgeon. Best case scenario, we remove these fish, we reestablish submerged aquatic vegetation, which will just open the doors for potential reintroductions. All the different experimentation opportunities that present itself is worth it. The three spined stickleback is one of the first animals we plan to reintroduce. It still exists in the Presidio in Lobos Creek. It's a fairly small fish, it probably gets about yay big. And one of the reasons why it is being proposed for introduction to be a host for the parasitic form of the California floater, which is a mussel that relies on a host in order to get dispersed. 
And of course, three spine stickleback are of such a size that they're really not going to disturb the substrate. They feed by gleaning insects off of aquatic vegetation. So their mode of activity is definitely different from carp. We also plan to reintroduce reptiles and amphibians. We're looking at the Pacific chorus frog, the western pond turtle, newts, and perhaps the endangered red-legged frog. All of these used to be in Mountain Lake. The red-legged frog in California is currently a threatened species. That means it's gone through a massive decline, and we're trying to bring it back. And we believe that this site, despite the fact that it's surrounded by an enormous metropolitan area, it could be a very good site to bring these frogs back. Well, the red-legged frog is, we think, a really good candidate for a reintroduction at, at Mount Lake because, you know, these red-legged frogs are actually pretty tough. They can survive really well. In fact, we even have a surviving population within the city limits of San Francisco in Golden Gate Park. So we know these frogs can survive even in close proximity to humans. So I think the restoration of Mount Lake is a very important project because it can serve not only to provide more habitat for these species of wild amphibians that need it, but it can also be a really important educational tool for the public. Here we have a place where in a couple of steps from the big city, we can have these wild populations of amphibians right in front of us. And we can show people that these threatened species of frogs, if we give them just a little bit of habitat, they can actually survive quite well. So, so conservation can happen in our backyard. Some of these species, like the western pond turtle and the amphibians, need a more protected habitat to go to when they nest. That place is usually in the uplands near the lake. That's one reason we're restoring disturbed sites around the lake into wetlands and uplands and planting native species there for cover and for habitat. We've been looking for a great opportunity where we could reintroduce the turtles into a place like Mountain Lake where they were once common and have been eliminated. So it's a really interesting and I think a really valuable project. The turtles we're bringing in all come from the same very pristine area in Lake County. We have had a project going in between my laboratory here at Sonoma State and the San Francisco and Oakland zoos and their conservation departments. We go up to a site where we know there's a good population of turtles there, a nice healthy population, and we've figured out protocols and techniques for following the gravid females when they're ready to lay eggs out to their nest site. We carefully collect the eggs, mark them. We hatch them here, but once we've got a bunch of baby turtles, that's where the zoos and their area of expertise really comes in handy because they now have dedicated facilities where they do what we call head starting, which is you feed them, keep them warm, keep them clean, and they can grow much faster under these conditions than they would in the wild because they're cold-blooded animals, they're ectotherms. In less than a year, we can get the turtles up to the size of about maybe a three or four-year-old individual, and then we can reintroduce them to Mountain Lake. It's feeding time for the turtles, and today we're feeding houseflies. And these are actually houseflies that we breed ourselves just for the turtles and for some of our frogs. It's a nice variety, and it makes them really hunt for their food. We feed three different species of worms, crickets, and fish, and all of it is fed in a way they have to forage for it, so that we're actually preparing them from day one to be able to catch their own food, to be able to find their own food, and really preparing them for a life outside of here. So another really nice thing about the Western Pond Trail at Mountain Lake is we're going to be introducing small ones, but over 10 years they'll grow to adults. So the community will be able to watch them grow. Kids will kind of grow up with them, and hopefully people will be there and see them, and that will really be kind of the symbol of this now restored lake. That's exciting for us because it is an amazing and very underappreciated animal locally. I think this is the wave of the future. I think success or failure, we're going to learn a tremendous amount from this. If it is a success and we are able to establish long-term surviving, reproducing viable populations, it will be a magnificent triumph. I mean, it'll be one of those things you just, you know, we've done it. Um, we see what happens. But we put together a team. I think we've set ourselves up to succeed here. The promise of Mountain Lake as a dynamic outdoor classroom, as a place where families can bring their children for an experience of wildlife, 
for San Franciscans to come and experience a piece of their natural heritage, for other members of the public to come do citizen science and help us track the health of our wildlife reintroduction efforts. This promise will only be fulfilled if people do the right thing at Mountain Lake. We're rolling out a pledge campaign. One gets a cute sticker with our ambassador animal, the Western Pond Turtle, which involves an oath of letting wildlife find their own food, of not abandoning pets at the lake, and also sharing what one learns about the wildlife at the lake with friends and family. This is a project that can have influence on urban restoration projects around the world. It can provide both the inspiration and the information to continue to do this great work that's so vitally important in our cities to connect the human world with the natural world and prove that we can coexist in a really healthy way.